from your experiences on a personal level, professional level, I mean, personally working in the profession, what are the main learning points that you think they are key to share with the police as they are on their journey for professionalization at the moment? Hmm. Uh, get your message right. So we've talked a lot about yes. communication. Um, Michael Fullen talks about the meaning of educational change. Mm -hmm. It becomes meaningful for people when they understand what it means to them. Yes. Not to the profession, but to those individual police officers that are working, you know, as we speak now, keeping us all safe. Um, so I think there's, there's definitely something about communication and getting your, your, your message right. I think the relationship building that we've just talked about is another key important point. And I would say, remember that you've got an existing workforce and you need to value that existing workforce and listen to the concerns that they've got and address those concerns. Um, and then I think if you do that, you'll, you'll, you know, that journey will be a little bit, a little bit shorter. Yeah. We didn't invest as much in, con in continuing professional development for the existing workforce that we should have done. Mm -hmm. We concentrated on getting the entry routes right, yeah. and I know that the police are concentrating on getting the entry routes right, but not at the expense of CPD, because otherwise, you won't have that workforce that feels valued mm -hmm. and is ready to accept these new graduates into the profession. Mm -hmm. it, it does take a generation, but it can take a lot longer than that yeah, yeah. if you don't quite get those bits right. They would be the three key messages, yeah. I would say. Bob, well, you have shared something similar with me. Well, Any you, another? Yeah, other yes, point? those three about the communication and, and, and connecting and, and not forgetting the existing workforce, all of that uh, absolutely vital element to it all. Um, I think also uh, don't be in a rush. Mm -hmm. um, I know you've got deadlines, I know someone set some targets and some dates on things, but actually get it right if you possibly can without having to be pushed. I mean it's a bit like Crossrail, it constantly moves to the next target when the station's going to open, but actually it'll open when it's ready. Yeah. And I think with the policing, you can't just have it as an in depth in different sort of when will it happen, but it, it needs to be right and it needs to be carefully worked through. Mm -hmm. um, I think those are the, the, the keyest things really. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to repeat Thank what Steve has said. Denise, any I, final ideas about it? My idea, I think, based on the, the, the sort of panel today, really is, and I think reflects all the existing points about communication, but I think is the length of that journey, and I think what one of the things that we've identified is that the, the, the police is quite a reactive organisation and I think there needs to be a realisation that, that this is a longer term yes. journey. Mm. This isn't going to be solved tomorrow yeah. and, and an appreciation of that because this is about cultural kind of change and yeah. embedding it within the organisation that's going to take time yeah. and I think that's for me the big, the big communicator that we, we can't solve this by next yeah. year, we can't solve it by the year after, it may take 10, 15 years for this to be fully realised yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and there's going to be sort of different challenges on, on, on that journey yeah. but then I think the outcomes in the longer term will yeah. be worth That's the journey. I mean we had Project 2000 but we weren't there in 2000. The police have got Vision 2025, they'll be somewhere in 2025 but they won't be at the end point of the journey. Bob's absolutely right, you need to take your time and if you get all of those other things right you can shorten it but sometimes you have to make the mistakes that other professions have made in order to learn from those mistakes to move on. You know, I'll go back, it's taken us a hundred years, yeah. uh, well it's a hundred years since we started this process if you like with the register. It probably started earlier than that because Nightingale was probably the very first, yeah. if you like, nursing academic that's, that, 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 that's recognised. But actually she fought against registration, interestingly. Um, but now we're 100 years on and we're still developing, we're still moving on in exactly the same way as the paramedic profession is, is moving on. So, you know, you don't have to rush it. And the fact that you've got a vision that says 2025 is a nice line in the sand and a target to get to. But don't beat yourself up if you haven't quite got there. It might take you another 10, 15, 20 years. You will get there. Yeah. 21 years ago, we started with our first pre-reg graduate program. Only just before Christmas last year was the first uh, 
graduate programme in Northern Ireland. They took a little bit longer. Their journey was more, a little bit more round the houses, yeah. but they're there now. Yeah. And you know, we're working together to make sure that that model is right across the UK and that we've got standards, we've got a future, and that we're all working together. I think I would just say it's about kind of life long learning exactly. yeah, and it's also definitely. about continuous improvement yeah. so it's a continuous journey and a continuous yeah. reflection, yeah. thinking, changing yeah. and, and mm. it's going to take more than, you know... It would be four. Yeah. <laughs> Ever. <Yeah. laughs> and whilst it might take, uh, might take a long time, 1978 felt, just felt like yesterday. Yeah.